Hello, hello, hello viewers. Welcome to Eric's workshop. Um, we're going to be talking about life insurance today. Uh, we'll be examining the pros and cons, the benefits and privileges, the merits and demerits. You know, we're going to be dissecting life insurance today and critical illness. And we have in our mess a panelist. The first panelist is Mr. Gilbert Asari Boadu, mm. and I want to, you know, throw it to him to introduce himself to you viewers out there. Um, please welcome to the show, Mr. Boadu. Thank you, thank sir. you for coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. Um, my most honourable senior, Eric Donko, senior Talley. Thank you for having me, viewers and all listeners. My name is Gilbert Asari Boadu. As my honorable senior I just said and I am an advisor for AFH Wealth Management which deals in everything finance but then I specialize in personal protection which is a bigger umbrella under which insurance life insurance critical illness and everything insurance come under so yes today I am very honored to be here I'm sure by the end of this program you will understand why it is extremely important to consider, if you haven't already, personal protection, life insurance, critical illness, and the likes. As he said, we will go into it as we progress. All right, before we carry on, um, I just want to give just a brief synopsis of all these um, incidents about life insurance, because where we come from, from Ghana, um, we don't value life insurance and most most of us don't see the the need to subscribe or have a policy on life insurance and it's very imperative that individuals nowadays should try and subscribe to life insurance policies because we have incidences that when people are gone um families struggle to even you know um refrigerate them in terms of putting them in, in the in the mocks and all that the the financial sort of constraints are just too much so um before we carry on mr mm. asaribuadu mm. can i ask why you decided to go into insurance right <laughs> that's that's quite as a personal one but yes you know. it's an interesting question um i've been in project management in construction and all that but something kicked me that moved me into personal protection. Most of the time, if a Ghanaian loses a relative, the first few words that come out of their mouth is Eka Abba Ifi. Why do they say Eka Ifi? Because death is never anticipated, although it is expected to happen at some point in our lives. Yeah. We never prepare enough for death. Mm -hmm. It happens when we least expect. Unlike birth, where the lady carries a baby for about nine months, you know it's going to happen at some point within the nine months. But death is completely different. Even if the person is on a deathbed, you still cannot tell when they will pass on. And so when it happens, we worry about the costs involved. Where are we going to get the money for the burial? Because we always honor our people and want to give them a decent burial. So what I realized was that within the last one year, I always received messages from people giving me a link to make a donation or go fund me. And I'm like, okay, um, why are we donating every time to people when they've passed on? Why do people not have the money ready to do their funeral? So we go and support at the funeral. The difference that I saw between the Ghanaians and the white people was that a white person, as poor as they may be, the least they will leave behind will be money for their funeral. So I wondered, how do they do it? Which makes sense. How do they do it? Which makes sense. And then I realized it was insurance. So then I was checking the disparities between the blacks and the whites. Mm -hmm. Mostly blacks are very poor. Whites, quite rich. So I was wondering what is the difference? 
it's all boils down to inheritance. Yeah. So how do they leave money and wealth for the next generation? Screw insurance. So, so I decided to take it as a challenge, go into insurance, learn about it, get the licenses to push insurance, and then come back to my people, impact the knowledge into them, and then get most of them, drive them into that wealth creation and financial independence in the future. That's true uh, um, life insurance. Life insurance. So which means that insurance is also linked to doing a will. Absolutely. You know, because it's like you have to make sure mm. that you leave something behind. And Absolutely. even if you don't have anything, mm. insurance is just like a will because at least you've covered your back financially yes. so that your family wouldn't struggle. Absolutely. And we, I think we've been doing these donations for years mm, mm, mm. and it's absolutely critical for our people to come to the know and yeah. the knowledge that yeah. we need to start thinking critically about life insurance. Mm. But then, um, can you tell our viewers even how do they, you know, in the first place, where can they get life insurance in the first place or, you know, what sources of information is there for them to sort of grab it and assess and analyze things, evaluate before they decide that they can sort of, you know, try and get Life a insurance. policy, mm -hmm. you know, to cover them? Well, it is always advised that every person gets advisory notes before going for a life insurance policy, critical illness policy, income protection, anything under the personal protection bracket, Umbrella, yeah. get mm -hmm. advice from a trusted advisor, financial advisor, insurance advisor, get a good advice from one before going to get it. Else, you'll be missold insurance. Okay. There are so many keywords within insurance that you may not understand. And so you end up taking the policy because of price. Mm -hmm. Someone called me to review his policy mm -hmm. He had gone to a funeral and someone was passing through selling insurance and then he said, oh, please give me five pounds worth of insurance. So the person sold him five pounds worth of insurance. I reviewed it and I realized there's nothing in it. In the next 10, five years, if something happens to him, he couldn't claim nothing. Yeah. Because, because there are loopholes in there in the, that yeah. he needed to cover. And, and one thing that baffled me is that when you came to sort of explain things to me, um, mm -hmm. viewers, I've got a policy with him um, under his supervision and um, explanation of how things work with that kind of type of life insurance that he um, proposed. And I've got it now. But then I realized that the one that I even had with the banks was not explained to me. So in case of any emergency, I wouldn't be able to claim. Absolutely. But he was able to sort of, you know, pin down and explain things in detail for me to understand certain things. And we had to contact, contact our GP for all the medical history and information that we need to provide on the forms. Mm. So I think it was really helpful for me. But tell our viewers, you know, how can they sort of proceed when they really want to get into you yes, know sir. one of the policies okay to, let so. me let me try to break some a few things down when it comes to insurance what is insurance every human being is surrounded by risks so if you are surrounded by a risk you need to apply a certain technique a strategy in order to mitigate that risk bring that risk down yeah. So that in the future, if that risk explodes in your face, you've got something to cushion you, to lessen the pain. That is what the insurer, the person that gives you insurance, that is what he does. He has a good load of money, big chest of money, coming from everywhere into one pot. And then you say, listen, currently I'm 40 years old, I'm 30 years old, I'm 20, I'm 60 years old. I don't know what tomorrow will bring to me. So I want to insure myself for 20 years. How much should I pay to be able to get 100,000 if I die tomorrow for my family? You get me? So then the insurer says, okay, brilliant. Charles, come in. Hmm. Yeah, one moment. Uh, 
Yeah, and then the insurance says sorry for the, the ins- insurance, insurance says okay you know what I'm going to give you hundred thousand pounds if mm-hmm. you should die tomorrow yeah. anytime between now and the next 20 years mm-hmm. but you pay me 30 pounds mm-hmm. every month mm-hmm. as your part of the burden yeah. so there is a contract between the insured which is you mm-hmm. seeking insurance and then the insurer to pay you a certain amount of money between that time frame mm-hmm. because you know that there is only one thing which is assured to all human beings that is death mm-hmm. you know that you cannot lose it's inevitable <laughs> it's yeah. inevitable yeah. you cannot lose and uh, so time. one day you will die mm-hmm. if you die your family benefits from that money so it becomes a must have for you but you know the blacks we don't want to talk about death you know absolutely but it's inevitable mm. there's something that you cannot run away from it that is <coughs> so true. And mm-hmm. I, when I went to, I was referred to a Nigerian lady, a hairdresser, was referred to me. Mm-hmm. And then I was taking him through the whole insurance thing. And he, she, she kept on saying, oh, that one, um, Tofiapa, is not going to happen to me anytime soon. Viewers, we're going to get back and we're going to come back. Um, watch out for the next series um, of this insurance. Please listen attentively as we go through this life insurance policy. And it's going to help you 